So this is another problem that's not actually in your notes. It comes from the workshop. So if you guys are going to try this, you need to go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a shot on your own first. That was your chance. So now here we go. So it's really tempting to look at this and say, oh, 25 milliliters, 0.2 molar, or 25 milliliters, 0.2 molar. Ah, oh, wait a minute, I know what to do. This is obviously at the equivalence point. Clearly, obviously. So we're not actually at the equivalence point. Really tempting, but not true. And here's the thing. Whenever you're doing something that involves something that you've got a base that actually has two hydroxides, there's a couple of different ways to take care of it. So we're going to look at both ways. So you've got method A. And you got to bear with me for a moment as we're going to do both of these. So a lot of you guys have the general know-how that you're like, aha, I'm going to take my acid, add it to my base, and I know I get a salt and water. And the nice thing is, is I actually know that both of these things are strong. I've got a strong acid and a strong base, so I don't really usually care about what's happening over here. I just care about what happens with this relationship. Now, the thing you do to take into account, though, is, is that these don't react in a one-to-one -one ratio. There should actually be a two in front of that HCl. This is easier if you'll go ahead and write out whatever your salt is, because then you'll get BACL2 and be like, uh-oh, I need two chlorides, there's my two chlorides. And really, there should actually be a two here in front of this water as well to make everything balanced. So this is your first thing in option A, is you've got to realize that there should be a giant two right here. So then we can still do our table in moles, as we've done before. So then we're going to take and multiply our volume in liters times our molarity and get a volume and get a number in moles. So when we do that, you find that you've actually got the same number of moles. Again, you're trying to try and do a little happy dance. We must be at the equivalence point. But remember, this is set up such that when something goes away, you've got to worry about this coefficient here. So the amount that goes away is twice as much. You need twice as much of your hydrochloric acid to react with one mole of your barium hydroxide. So then you can look at this and like, well, if I'm using this up twice as fast, this is going to be my thing that goes to zero. I need twice as much of this as I do of the other. So that's when you can try to take a little moment and be like, so if that all went away, I actually have 2x equal to zero. 0.5 moles, and this x is actually going to be 0 0.025. And again, this is not always the preferred method, so method B may look a little bit simpler. So regardless, you can get to this point and realize that, aha, I actually have barium hydroxide left over. Woohoo! Figure that one out. Then you still have to take a moment and realize that your barium hydroxide breaks apart into barium and two hydroxides, two of those guys. So when that happens, you're actually going to have to take the amount of barium hydroxide you have. And we have this little trick where we take moles, barium, hydroxide, and we multiply it by a factor and be like for every one mole barium hydroxide, there's two moles of hydroxide. And then from there, you're basically essentially multiplying it by two, so you get 0, 0.05 moles hydroxide. So this is actually where I'm going to pause and where we're going to go to method B. So we're looking at the exact same problem, except now we're going to actually pretend like we're starting all over again. I know that's kind of annoying, but this method is, I think, actually a lot easier for most people. But again, both ways will actually work, so it's important to show you guys that there's not just one way to do this. So method B, you look at your barium hydroxide, you look at your HCl, you realize that this is a strong, strong titration. Once you realize that, really what you're reacting is you're just reacting H plus and OH minus together. That's really what you have. So you still need your table in moles, and you can think to yourself, okay, I am going to make a salt in the water. I don't really care about that, but I can remember that. So this is all going to be in moles. So when I'm looking at HCl, my H plus has to come from HCl. Well, HCl goes to H plus plus Cl minus. That's going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio. 
So for every one mole of HCl, I get one mole of H plus. So this is all just all the same. So I've got my moles, oh, that's too many zeros. Moles of H plus. My hydroxide though, we've got to spend a little bit more time on because that's not just the same. So my barium hydroxide goes to barium plus hydroxide, but there's two of those. So every one mole of barium hydroxide is actually equal to two moles hydroxide ions, which means even though I get 0, 0.05 moles barium hydroxide, this is actually 0 0.01 moles hydroxide. So this is really the key that you need is something to realize that, okay, wait a minute, my barium, when it breaks apart, I actually have twice as much. So this is the number that I actually need because I'm dealing all in hydroxide ions. So when I come over here, that's the actual number I want. The nice thing is from here, now it looks like a normal titration as far as something's gonna go to zero, that's gonna be the smaller number. So you're looking at subtracting the smaller number of moles, and then you get 0 0.005 moles hydroxide. The other nice thing with method B is you're now in hydroxide. So you are exactly where you want to be. Notice that when we did method A, we still get to this exact same number. I'm gonna move this sheet for just a moment. So there's my moles of hydroxide. And hey, there's my moles of hydroxide. We, so we did get to exactly the same point. But frankly, I think that this method's a little bit more simple and straightforward. So I tend to like it a little bit better. So now that we have our moles of hydroxide, the question actually asked us originally for pH. So again, if I'm gonna ask for pH, I'm gonna need my final volume. So that's gonna be 25 milliliters plus 25 milliliters. It's gonna be 0 0.05 liters. And by the time I do that, I'm gonna get a grand total of 0 0.1 molar as my hydroxide concentration. To make my life easy, I'll usually just take the pOH of that so take the negative log of 0 0.1. My pOH is then 1. So my pH is then 13. 